In this video, we're going to break down the uh, the move here, the more recent move that we've seen in Bitcoin, this little pop right here. So you can see exactly where we've come from. This is the more recent markup, markdown, distribution, accumulation, reaccumulation phases in here. This is a daily time frame. This is Bitcoin. So this is a daily time frame. I'm going to dissect this area right here. So I'm going to explain exactly how we traded this right here. Uh, this moved to the downside. We traded it with an entry of about 54,400 to about 29,100. These are approximations here, but they're precise numbers here. And then just to give you an idea of what, how we're trading this, this is this sideways. So it moves back into this pocket, this range of consolidation here. It moves back into this range right here through May. And then in July, it starts to print that final test and that spring. So let me go ahead and open it up. And then I'll bring you right to where we are currently. So this is the spring, this is the entry on this pullback, and then we trade it from 40,025 entry to the target of 50,100. And then this area of reaccumulation right here gave us a further count so we could participate in this little top right here, and then we're done at that point. You can see back over here on the left-hand side of the chart, this is where we see a majority of that consolidation phase created, the high, the low, sideways we dipped back into it we talked about this when it did that i was actually watching this here and this goes back to let me get that date for you this dip was uh, september 21st so it was just a matter of watching and then waiting for the behavior now this move right here that you see more recently the more recent uh, candles or, i'm sorry bars that you see here this in my opinion was a good opportunity for me to trade it on a smaller time frame like the one hour chart because we're trading inside of this range right here I didn't have enough data to think that it was going to go further. Now, if it does go further, I'm going to get an area of reaccumulation, which will then give me a further count. We're going to go back to this area right here. You'll see that range of consolidation on the one hour time frame. So now we're looking at the one hour time frame. This is Bitcoin. This is all the more recent price action. You can see a live candle here. So I'm looking at this as a possible area of accumulation we've got this move to the downside here we've got the selling climax the automatic reaction that solidifies and sets in my support and resistance at that point i know that i have a spike low here and i know that i have a spike high here i'm well aware of the high and the low overall but what is setting up this initial range and what i use this for as far as the selling climax that support low and that automatic reaction high it's the same way if i'm trading it in an area of distribution i'm looking at the you know a possible markdown basically the same thing again uh, it would be a buying climax and an automatic reaction but why i leave my support and resistance here is that this is going to tell me and help me identify and track the uh, behavior and the footprint of smart money where are they going to acquire is it actually uh, a range of accumulation or distribution. I want to make sure that before I get into these trades, I'm not going to get stuck in some kind of a head fake where it looks like it's going to go higher and then turns around and comes back down. Uh, again, it could have been an area on this move down. It could have been an area of redistribution and then another move lower. That is also a possibility. But there are certain characteristics based on volume and the behavior. The range of these bars and how these bars look, how they close, you know, the again, the range meaning from the high to the low of some of these bars, and the overall behavior and the structure by analyzing this, this phase of consolidation, which in this, in this case, relative to this time frame, was an area of accumulation, I'm going to be able to determine where the last testing is uh, taking place. If there's volume and momentum coming back in, where smart money is acquiring before another move back up and a breakout, which leads me to believe that there's likely to be some kind of a breakout and a bigger move. Again, this is just tracking that constant battle of supply and demand. You can see it on the chart, especially with volume if you know how to read volume. So I'm going to show you my volume chart here in just a moment. In this opportunity, I was able to get into this trade inside of phase C realizing that it was probably over with. The testing was done. We've had multiple tests of the support low, that overall selling climax low. It never really touched it. So let me take you to another chart here and walk you through this entry. I think it's very important that you understand how I find these entries and how I find these targets. Again, the targets themselves are actually determined on a point and figure chart. A point and figure chart. That would be another video for another, you know, another 15, 20 minute video where I could explain exactly how I'm getting uh, the data here to line up so that I can calculate just how far it's going to go. But again, as I mentioned, if it's going to continue to go higher, I'm not done with the trade. I'm going to get another area of reaccumulation if in fact that's what it is. And then it'll give me another further count. And I can take the trade to another target. 
Okay, so just to confirm, this is the area that we're going to be talking about. This is that pocket of consolidation that we dipped right back down into. And that date here on this chart, this is a trading view. This is a September 21st. So let's go ahead and break it down on the smaller time frame, one hour time frame. Okay, so now we're looking at the one hour time frame. We've got volume here, bar chart, the same pattern, basic setup. Uh, we have our selling climax automatic reaction. There's my resistance, there's my support. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up so you can see just exactly how uh, the, the bars are trading in and around these support and resistance levels. So obviously if I'm thinking that it's a range of accumulation I'm looking for signs of accumulation or acquiring that the smart money acquiring here at the lows. Okay, so now I've marked up the chart here. You can see the swings as we get into this right side of this area of accumulation, the last test, and then the move to the upside. So I'll quickly walk you through what I'm doing here. So let's go back to the wave counting method. So again, I'm just counting the waves. I got this down wave here with 154. Um, I've got this one single move right here. Uh, this bar right here, this reversal, you can see there's a lot of volume as it stopped right there, printed 164, just with that one bar alone. But the accumulation of all of these bars here to the upside on this swing was a total of 468. So you can see this stopping action. We're also paying attention to, again, this level of support. You can see it right there. And I'm paying attention to the, the bars. So the range of the bars. We talked about this one right here, how this one actually had a larger range than the previous day where price stopped right there at that support level and didn't close below that level. It broke through it. And again, a lot of people, when they see that, they think, okay, well, it's, you know, we were in a downtrend, so it's about to break to the downside. Let's go. You know, there's a lot of volume right here, or they're looking at the volume, but they're not necessarily counting and measuring this. It's a, you know, very scientific approach. So at this point, I'm not thinking that there's any signals. There's not any opportunity. This reversal right here is strong and it's stopping the price, the movement to the downside. But at that point, it's still not an opportunity to get into the trade. I would like to see some more continued tests or something that is a little more significant as far as this reversal. So then we get this move here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six bars printing a total of 279. And then we get this little pullback right here, 133, 27 on the move up. 292 on the move down and then we get this one last final wave right here that really starts to accelerate things 243 so it's telling me again that there's a lot more uh, activity driving price back into this support level but they still can't break the support level with any significance it's not going to go any lower and then we get this one bar right here that prints 75 not significant not like we saw over here but it's still holding no candles here none of the bars indicate a selling opportunity and then on this move here with the entry that's where we get a majority of that volume but by counting the waves and watching volume like this it makes it very very obvious what's happening that there is still an attempt to try and drive price lower they can't it's not going anywhere then it starts to reverse and then we get a lot more volume coming back in driving price right back and around which gave us our entry here I'm gonna go back to that chart with our entry here's our entry at 41 480 and here was our target at 4770 and I'm going to be watching this for signs of either a top or it's distribution and then maybe the next markdown phase, or it's going to remain sideways. It's going to show signs that it is a area of reaccumulation. So again, another perfect trade. So an entry of 41,480 to 47,700. Great trade. And I'm looking for the next opportunity here now.